There's one thing about it. We still have a God that's over this country that we still recognize as the God. Not a God, but the God. Amen. Let me tell you right now, there are other countries that acknowledge other gods. And sadly enough, at times, those gods have made their way into this country. And people have tried to put those gods beside our God. And let me tell you, they'll be, they, he'll have no other gods before him. That's in the commandment. Somebody say amen. One bit has God changed. And he'll have no other gods before him. Amen. And I'll tell him every day, God, our, our government may be trying to oust you and they don't want you in, a, in, in the White House. Our colleges may not allow us to pray like we like we like to and, have we, and how we used to pray in the past and the commitments and the, and the services and, and graduations. But let me tell you, every day I said, God, this is still one country under one God. Hallelujah. And I still love you. And I, I'm telling you, I'm an American to the bone. I love America and all these people that don't like America get you a ticket fly out of this country go find you somewhere else to live is that alright I mean I, I, I'm serious I'm so tired of people hating on America I'm like look at here I can go down to the store and buy bread and milk and I, I got the liberty and the freedom to work and to, 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 to celebrate my life here and I'm telling you I told a man not long ago, I said, you know how you can tell a country is really free and it's really a good country? He said, how is that? I said, how, how many, how, I said, when, you, when they show you the, the uh, Rio Grande in Mexico, I said, how many of the Mexicans are swimming from America back to Mexico? I said, how many people are trying to die to get in Saudi Arabia and Libya and Turkey? They ain't none of them. They're all trying to get out of there because they're in, they're in bondage and they're, there's freedom here. Let me tell you, you can tell how good a country's going by how many people are trying to get in it. Somebody say amen. And I'm telling you right now, I love America. And everybody that is opposed to what we stand for, go live in Saudi Arabia for a while. If you keep your head... More power too. But I'm glad I live in America. How about you? Tell I'm stirred up, can't you? My God, somebody needs to say it. I said somebody needs to say it. I'm telling you, I've never met so many scared preachers in my life. Well, we might get sued. Well, we might go to hell if we don't tell it to. Come on now. Can, can I just preach a little while? Well, I ain't going to talk about politics. Well, why not? Well, then we get into all oh, what we what we believe. Let me tell you right now, God's in the middle. We got politics because of God. Because of the commandments. We have a law. We have that law because of God. And, 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 and we, we, we shouldn't be ashamed or, or have to take a back seat when we're sitting somewhere and somebody disagrees with our views. We ought to have enough gumption about us to say, wait a minute here, hold up a minute. The reason I believe that ain't just because it's in the Constitution. I'm glad for that, but it's in the Word of God too. And, and, and I'm an American and I still believe that the, this America was born out of the desire to be free from the oppression of tyranny where we could pray and exercise our right to worship God. Somebody say amen. The men and women of the armed forces of the United States who have paid the ultimate sacrifice, who have given their own lives in defense of this great nation of ours to preserve the freedoms that everyone in this room holds so very dearly. Amen? Amen. Jesus Christ himself my and, and, and the beloved uh, John the Apostle talked about how that there was no greater love that no one could demonstrate Jesus said it then for a man to lay down his life for his friends. The ultimate gift of life is death. I mean, the, think about it. The ultimate gift of a human life is the death of another human life. In order for people to live, there has to be people at times die. Hey, make no mistake about it. There's some religions who hide behind 
whatever their theology who won't join the military and won't be involved in government boy they don't mind telling you how they believe it should be run somebody say amen hey i say put your money where your mouth is my thing is, you know, we, 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 we hide behind that. But the Word of God says there's a time for peace, but bless God, there's a time for war. There's a, there's a, time, there's a time for it. There's a time for gathering in stones. There's a time for casting stones away. There's a time for planting. There's a time for harvest. Everything there is, there's a time for it. And I really believe, I'm not saying God institutes war. There's madmen in our world. We, we can thank for that. But that never did God ever tell us we need to back down and sit down and say, you know, we're going to let madmen kill off, you know, uh, uh, all the peoples of the world. Whatever group they want to pick out, they kill them. No, I'm glad America still got enough backbone to say, huh, uh, we're going to join forces with some people and we're going to make sure that the Taliban and, and, the, and the, the radical Muslim groups is trying to destroy our freedom. Hey, I don't care what the media says. It ain't about, it's not about just America and, and, and what we believe and the Muslim world. Make no mistake about it. They don't like Jehovah God. They don't like Christianity. They hate our freedom. They hate our Bible. They hate our, the Constitution of the United States of America. Have made this nation the greatest nation ever to be formed on the face of the earth. Hallelujah. In an era to those principles, Almighty God has blessed this nation like no other nation. And to Him we give the honor and the praise and the glory to this morning. On this day we are troubled by the lack of respect that is being shown to Almighty God. By the lack of respect that is being shown to the laws that Almighty God has given us. God have mercy. I feel like preaching a little while. By the lack of respect that is being shown to our departed servicemen and women, the Mojave Desert War Memorial Cross, you remember some time back, built and dedicated in 1934. My God, it was destroyed and removed by persons or persons unknown that don't even know. High school students in California were ordered to remove their T-shirts after displaying the American flag and told them to turn them inside out because they may offend Latino students who were celebrating Cinco de Mayo and displaying, Amer and displaying Mexican flags. The American flag just symbolizes our hopes and all of our aspirations. I need some help in here today. It symbolizes our struggles and our sacrifices. It symbolizes our joys, but my God, our achievements also. This nation is not Mexico. It is the United States of America, and the American flag is our flag. Now, I don't, I'm not a hater. I'm just telling you I'm glad I'm who I am. Hallelujah to God. Mm, 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 mm. And we should be able to display that flag whenever and wherever we desire. Because we believe in freedom, we allow a Latino citizen to celebrate Cinco de Mayo, you can celebrate it and display the Mexican flag. However, that does not give anyone the right to demand that we hide ours, though, in some kind of secure and secluded area. Our American servicemen and service women are special people. Hallelujah. Party movement. You heard of it? Yeah, here it is was started because this government is no longer governing with the consistent or consent of the government. This administration has set about with a determination to transform America into a nation that is unrecognizable from that which our founding fathers created. Oh my God. One nation under God, under God, under God, indivisible with liberty and justice for all. They have sought with a determination to undermine the Constitution of the United States of America. The American people are fed up with the assault upon their freedom. I don't know about you, but I'm fed up with it. I've had enough of it. I'm an American. I have freedoms. I have rights. And I don't have to apologize for any of that. How about you? Say amen. Amen. Hmm. They have risen up in protest to speak against the outrages that have been committed by the administration that's currently there and Congress. Mm -mm. Boy, if this goes YouTube, I might have a visit from the FBI. 
In nonviolent demonstration, they have spoken out against the direction that this nation is taking. And they have called upon the people to turn the people out of office who are trying to destroy this very nation as we know it today. To destroy free enterprise, to destroy free speech. I won't be able to preach no more if they do that. Somebody say amen. Somebody say amen again. To destroy free speech, to destroy the very principles and the men and the women we honor today and what they died for. Let me tell you right now. I hunt and I fish and I'm a second amendment my God believer. I believe in the right to keep and bear arms. Are y'all with me? Say amen. Now look, they might not believe that in the city. I was born different. I was raised different. But where I come from, a man ought to have two things. A pickup truck and a gun of some type. Somebody say amen. Man told me, asked me the other day, said, Preacher, what you think about all these killings in the theaters and places of business where people are coming in? He said, Don't you think sooner or later they're going to visit churches and come in and try to kill us? I said, That's fine. I said, But I'm going to put some of my community in the old notice. Let me tell you right now. And some of y'all going to think, y'all going to say, Oh my God, the preacher is off the deep end. He's been listening to too many radical Americans. I mean, he, he's got that Second Amendment thing going way too far with that thing. But let me tell you, they ain't coming in here killing our children. Are you hearing me? They ain't going to do it. They ain't going to do it if I have to arm every man in this room. They ain't going to do it. And when somebody walks in here and says, hey, we just going to take advantage of these little old, simple, humble Christians. They going to find out we took 45, 40s, 9. Some of us got shotguns in the truck. Are you hearing me? I'm just telling you right now. You may say, well, my God, that, that, that's violence. Now, let me tell you right now. The kingdom of God suffered violence, but the violent take it by force. Let me tell you. You may come in, but you won't leave that way. <laughs> Hallelujah. That ain't how, I'm going to go ahead and tell you, that ain't how we roll around here. Amen. I'm just telling you, that ain't how we roll. And some people get mad and they say, oh, we should, we should just love and be at peace. Let me tell you right now, when that man was shooting them people up yonder in that theater, wasn't nobody jumping up and saying, let me preach you a message about love, man. Let me tell you what he need. Quit. Let me tell you, I'm tired of people getting murdered. I'm tired of our loved ones being beat with baseball bats over on the park bench in Augusta. Somebody say amen. amen. I'm telling you, we need to stand up and say, hold on a minute. I'm telling you, I, I told my wife, I said, but <laughs> she's like, don't do it, Philip, don't do it. I thought to myself, if a man come at me and I didn't have nothing, I'd look him dead and I said, let me tell you something, son. You can hit me if you want to, but the Holy Ghost will kill you dead at 4 o'clock right here. Because I'm the anointed of God. And I'm telling you right now, I belong to Jesus, and that don't mean, that don't mean that, may not mean nothing to the world, but it does to God. You can touch me if you want to, but I guarantee you in a few, few days from now, they'll put you in the ground, and they won't, matter of fact, God will put you there, and you won't, they won't even know where to find you. <laughs> hey, we need not back down from people. I'm tired of it. How about you? I said, how about you? And you know who's behind all of it? Booger D. Devil himself. I'm talking about the capital. I'm talking about the capital offender himself. He's behind all the violence, behind all the drugs. And while we sitting in our little closet, you know, doing this and doing that, he's running rampant. Somebody ought to stand up in your school and say, listen here, you ain't bringing drugs in here in the name of Jesus. You ain't bringing no drugs in here. You can do whatever you want to do, but that's all right. They say, well, you better not call the law because they'll target you then. Hey, God created law for the law. It's not for the folks who's carrying out the law. Somebody say, hey. God, I ain't preached like this in a long time. I mean, the law ain't for the people that obey the law. It's for the laws. But how many felt like it's been crammed down your throat? I'm doing what's right, but they want to ouch me. I got rights. Some folks don't hit a lick at us. Oh, my God. The Bible said if you don't work, you don't eat. Uh, no, your Bible says you don't work, you don't eat. I can't believe how many people in America don't hit a, can I say hit a lick of a snake? They, they won't hit a lick of a 
snake. And they make more every week than the man and the woman going to the factory working 40, 50 hours a week. And they tell us our system is not broke. You remember the old Chinese proverb. You know, you give a man a fish, two or three hours later he'll be hungry again. But if you teach a man how to fish, he'll never be hungry again. My brother Bryson, where are you at? I tried to teach that little brother how to fish the other day. <laughs> teach him how to fish. He'll always be a fisherman. He'll, he'll know how to fish. He'll know how to provide for himself. That's the thing. Folks have got to provide for themselves. There is a thing in this country called honest work ethics. You go to work, you come home. You pay your bills, you live right, you live ethical. You have some convictions about your life. Am I preaching all right this morning? I know some of y'all might say, that is like, unlike Pastor Phil. But it's high time that somebody tells somebody in the church that listen, it ain't all right to lay up in your house all day long and let the government and the people that work hard pay your bills. Somebody. Hey, and we, we make excuses for not telling that real well. I ain't making no excuses. Let me tell you, I was raised in a generation where there wasn't no such thing as dead beat. And if it was, and it, you wouldn't live too much long after that. Somebody finds you and stir you up real good. Can I say that? You'd be working for long. But we live in that country where, you know, it, it give me what I deserve. Give it to me. I didn't work for it, but give it to me. Hmm. Jesus Christ paid the ultimate sacrifice. Amen. His very own life. My God. So that we might be redeemed. Amen. That we might be restored in right relationship with Almighty God. So that we might have eternal life. For that, we thank you. There is a few more thoughts I wish to share with you, and I'll be very brief. I'm going off the page now. There are some thoughts concerning when you talk about Memorial Day, I think of soldiers who fought. There's not a person in this room, you may have never been in the military physically. But spiritually this morning, there's soldiers all over this room. If you are a born again believer, whether you wanted to or not, you enlisted to do battle. Come on now, amen. And if you don't think you ain't in a war, you need to get your head out of the sand and realize the devil is trying to kill steal and destroy everything you've got. Somebody say amen. amen. So today I'm talking to some soldiers. Touch your neighbor and say, I'm a soldier. I may not look like one right now, but my God, I'm a soldier. I may not be a threat to society, but I want to be a threat to hell and everything that it, it represents. I want Satan to get up every morning. When he gets up and I get up, I want him to go on red alert. Now I'm awake. Hallelujah.